Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer is learning to pray. As our trust in God grows, so do our prayers to God. And that's what his, this part of the Lord's Prayer touches on, trusting God's provision and trusting God's grace. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Learning to pray, give us our daily bread, declares I am dependent upon God to provide for my today and to my tomorrow and every day after that. Give us carries the idea that I can't provide what I need. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. I am dependent upon something greater than myself. We don't do well with dependence, especially us Americans. Think about some of the earlier phrases we learned as a child. I can do it, let me, and of course, everybody's favorite, mine. We carry that into adulthood and we start claiming possession of our territory and making our own provision. Not so in God's kingdom. There is no I can do it or mine. In God's kingdom, we are completely dependent. Thankfully, we have a God that is completely giving. Daily bread is the idea that we have all we need to live as God's kingdom people on the earth. It's the provision we need for each day. For some, daily bread is food. There are many in our world that struggle each day having enough physical sustenance just to live. For some, it's having enough emotional strength to make it through the day. Life can beat us up pretty good. Praying for daily bread puts things in perspective for our life. It reminds us that we have today and have no control over tomorrow. James said in James chapter 5, verse 14, that we are a mist that appears for a bit and then vanishes. So plan our lives with kingdom minds. Let His will bend our will. Jesus would say later in Matthew 6 that worrying about the daily bread of this life doesn't help. In fact, it hurts. We don't know what we will face tomorrow. Our preparation comes when we declare, I'm trusting our Father in heaven to prepare me to face whatever comes my way because He provides my daily bread. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we pray to a God that does, and He will prepare and equip us for what is coming. As we grow, we learn to see our life from God's perspective. We, we learn that He already has provided what we need in our life. Give us today our daily bread. The next phrase is forgive us our debts. Learning to pray for forgiveness declares I am dependent upon God's grace with my sin. We all have a story. For some, our sin resume is pretty ex extensive. Others may not have strayed very far from the path in their lives. No matter, we all find ourselves in need of forgiveness. My need for forgiveness is just as great as my need for daily bread. We are dependent upon His grace for that forgiveness. Paul said this in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. For in the gospel, God's righteousness is revealed. Here's the truth of the gospel. God became a human being to take away the sins of the world. The sacrifice for sins was a death which he himself bore on the cross many years ago. He rose from the dead to destroy the literal physical death grip that sin had on humanity and give hope beyond the grave. He went back to heaven as our high priest, one like us and one like God, who could continually intercede as we walk with him. He gives the Holy Spirit to every believer to guarantee their salvation and to guide their holiness. And one day he will return and we will be with Him forever. Our past is forgiven, our present is secure, and our future is full of hope. Through the gospel, God demonstrates His grace and forgives the guilt of our sin. The enemy whispers things like, you're too far gone. 
Your sin is too great. Those people will judge you. You belong to me. You will always be what you do. Or maybe from a different perspective, he says things like, you may be forgiven, but you will never have anything to offer. You may be forgiven, but if people really knew what you've done, if you are really forgiven, why do you struggle so much? You'll never make it. You're not strong enough. You'll be right back in your sin soon. Jesus said Satan has been a liar from the beginning. When he speaks, he speaks his native language of lies. He uses lies to hijack us emotionally and to create a system of doubt and shame in our life. We pray to a God that not only forgives, but equips us to live forgiven. He wants us to feel the relief and confidence that His grace gives. So how do you handle this type of hijack? First, recognize it can happen and when it does happen. Second, when you're recognizing that, get around people. The enemy works best when we're alone. Third, pour God's Word into your life. I have a list of promise verses that I read and, and often give to people that can help me and others redirect our thoughts and fuel the Holy Spirit. Finally, put good, good stuff into your mind. Podcast, worship music, and things like that will redirect our thoughts and fuel the Holy Spirit. Over all this, trust God's grace as you learn to do this process. Paul wrote in Romans 8.1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That is the gospel that has removed the legal guilt and the emotional guilt from our lives. Believe it and live in it. The next phrase, as we forgive our debtors, can take a deep dive into our emotions. Learning to pray, I forgive, declares I am dependent upon God to extend grace. Here's a fact of a fallen world. We have all experienced hurt, and we will experience hurt again. And while our experiences may be similar, the way it affects us will vary. For some, I can't even begin to fathom the nature or degree of hurt that you have been through. In our earthly minds, when we are hurt, we either try to avoid it or we want to hurt back. Either way, resentment can set in unless forgiveness takes place. As God's forgiveness brings healing, offering forgiveness to those who have offended us leads to healing as well. However, on our own, I can't get there. It's an act of God. There's a couple of things forgiveness does not do. It does not minimize the offense. Some have said, if I forgive, then it makes it okay what they did. And that's not true. Because another thing forgiveness does not do is it does not excuse wrongdoing. One is still accountable to God, or maybe even legally, for their actions. However, if I hold on to my resentments, it will occupy more and more space in my life to the point that it can control me. It will erode my joy and adversely affect my relationship with God and others. Withholding forgiveness doesn't right the wrong that's been done. It doesn't resolve the injustice that's been committed. In fact, it does the opposite. It binds me to the hurt and continually hurts me as I relive it over and over again. Forgiveness declares that we are trusting the grace of God to provide the healing from the offense and the injustices done by fallen people in a fallen world. It declares that we trust God to reign over the bad and the ugly in our lives that has been experienced at the hands of others. It declares that we will trust God's judgment and not our own. It declares that we will walk daily with Him not and not be controlled by the evil actions done to me in the past, whether those actions left bruises or deep, long-lasting scars. Learning to pray these three parts of the prayer, give us today our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. will take time. It requires growth. It will take some healing. Some days, we will do well. Some days, maybe not so well. No matter the day, no matter where you are on your journey of this, keep praying.